Hi, this is Sucha Datta, your SST teacher, teaching you the third chapter of class 9 geography textbook drainage. The word drainage has been derived from the word drain, which means to flow. And here we see that the rivers, the small ones join the big river and the big river falls into the sea or an ocean. There are tributaries and distributaries. The rivers make a soil fertile and if there are no rivers, the land becomes barren. Therefore, drainage system plays a very vital role in the agricultural sector of the country. But before we start with the chapter drainage, it is very necessary for us to understand the new words, terms and concept which will be used in the chapter. The first is watershed. The watershed is a higher ground and it separates two adjoining river basin. So once again, what is it? It is something which is little elevated and it is separating two adjoining river basins that is watershed. Next is dendritic drainage. See we are going to see the different kind of drainage system and the first one is the dendritic drainage. The dendritic drainage is that river system in which the streams join the main river and it looks like a tree with many branches. That is the shape of a dendritic drainage. What is it? Actually the river system is being joined by the streams but flowing in such a way that it looks like a tree with the branches. Next is the trellis drainage. This river system again is such that the river is joined by streams but they flow in sub parallel valleys. Next is radial drainage. Radial drainage is again a river system wherein the streams flow outwards in different direction. Here the streams are flowing outward. Whereas in the other ones you were seeing that the streams were joining the main river. Next is the inland drainage. Inland drainage. It is in fact that river system in which the river does not have sufficient water to reach the sea or an ocean and it flows into a lake. Next is the gorge. But before I start with that, remember children that there are four kind of drainage systems that we have and they are the dendritic, tree-like, trellis which flows in sub parallel valleys, radial wherein the streams flow outward and inland drainage where the river does not have much water, gorge. Gorge is in fact a deep river valley which has steep walls. Next is braided rivers. Braided river is that river which carries lot of silt to form the silt islands. So very important because it is going to make the soil very fertile. So these are the very interesting terms which you should be aware before we start the chapter. The next term is perennial river. Perennial rivers are very important for the country because they flow throughout the year. They have sufficient plenty water and they are snow fed rivers. So a must for the development of the country as far as agriculture is concerned. Next is river basin. River basin is in fact an area 
which is drained by a river and its tributaries. That is the catchment area of a river. That is wherever this river flows and its tributaries flow, that is called as the river basin of that particular river. Next is peninsular river. The peninsular river are generally or they are non permeable that is to say that they do not have sufficient water throughout the year because they are dependent on rainfall and they generally flow in the Deccan plateau of India. Next is the Himalayan rivers. Himalayan rivers again mighty big rivers with lots of water snow fed rivers and never do we feel that there is scarcity of water in these Himalayan rivers. Lagoons. Lagoons are the shallow salt water lakes and these are generally found in the Malabar coast. Next is the delta. Delta is a triangular area of sediments formed at the mouth of a river. Next is the silt. Silt is a layer of very fine particles generally carried by a river which makes the land fertile. Next is seasonal river. As the name suggests, they generally flow in a particular season that is the rainy season and most of the peninsular rivers are the seasonal rivers as they depend upon the rainfall and whenever there is high rainfall there is lots of water in the seasonal rivers and when there is no rainfall they get actually dried up that is about the seasonal rivers. Now those were the new terms and concept which you needed to know before I start with the chapter and here in the next clipping we will start with the chapter called drainage.